Okay, let's get to it. You're probably watching this while in queue because you're busy or just hearing about the hype of the new league. Here's what you need to know, no fluff, no bullshit. At the beginning of a zone, there's a portal. Go in this to engage with the mechanic, otherwise ignore it. At that point you should have just played standard. Portal takes you to the Viridian Wildwood. Here it's dark as fuck. This darkness is the affliction. You have a ring of wisps that will light up the area around you and clear the darkness. You only have so long, but it's based on distance and not time, before the wisps can light the way any further. When they run out of power, you're given a portal to go back to the map or zone you were in. Because this is distance based, you can backtrack and it won't count against the wisps total power. Keep in mind to be careful as monsters come out of the darkness to attack you, very similar to Delve, minus the map and node system. While traveling, you'll see more colored wisps that may branch off the path you're going. You should follow them because they're more likely to take you to a point of interest. On top of collecting these trail of wisps will be more beneficial to you, but more on that later. At these point of interest, you're looking for boss fights or more importantly, the Asmiri Wanderers. The Wanderers have quests for you that will give you the ability to add a Wildwood Ascendancy. This Ascendancy can stack on your original Ascendancy and no, the points are not shared between them. It's my understanding that you get the first two points upon finding them. I'm not sure what the next quest entails, but you get another two for killing a mini boss, and the last is for killing the League's big bad, the King in the Mists. Which ascendancy you get depends on which wanderer you find. You can switch ascendancies by asking them when you find them, and unlike normal ascendancies, each node can be respect for only one regret. Here's the brief overview of the Wildward ascendancies. The Breaker of Oaths grants the Warlock of the Mists. Part of this ascendancy is blood magic, but on crack. But if you're scared to use your life to use your abilities, you can also get the ravenous skill, which grants you the ability to target a monster's corpse, consume it, and you'll take reduced damage to that type of monster. This buff only persists for the zone. For those noticing that not all monster types are available, or things like pinnacle bosses aren't able to be targeted, the Breaker of Oaths sells corpses for wild wisps, the purple ones. Also important to note that these corpses can be turned into specters. The Dark Effigy creates a totem that links to you. Hits to you go to the totem, but hits to the totem go back to you 200%. So keep the totem safe, but also don't break the link. Wanting some more curse shenanigans than the game currently offers? Warlock of Power gives you three options to pick one from. Pacify curses targets doing nothing, but once 60% of the curse has expired, the targeted monsters do no damage to you for the remaining 40% duration. Affliction curses your minions, causing them to lose their life at a rapid pace and explode when they hit a certain life rate. Penance marks one enemy and makes them spawn phantasms when you hit them. These phantasms are not on your team, so it's meant to be more of an alternative to Worm Blast or Explody builds. This ascendancy also has passive increased quantity of Wild Wisps found. The Warden of Eves grants the Warden of the Magi. Tinctures are the specialization of this ascendancy. Tinctures take up flash slots but are not flasks, and you must take the node in the ascendancy to be able to use them. These tinctures are applied to your weapons and affect your attacks. Further specialization increases the effect of these tinctures or adjacent slots. The Warden sells these tinctures for Vivid Wisps, the yellow ones. Don't do attacks or want to sacrifice flash slots? The Warden of the Magi has other utilities to benefit any playstyle. Barkskin is an aura that will grant you armor. Upon being hit, you'll lose this armor but gain evasion until no further damage is taken. Detect Evil is essentially map hacks, letting you see rare and unique monsters on the minimap. Oath of the Magi will give you a boost based on gear with no socketed gems. This ascendancy has increased quantity of Vivid Wisps. The Primal Huntress teaches you to be the Wildwood Primalist. This is the Jack of All Trades ascendancy, almost like a build your own Scion Ascendant. Howl of the Wolf lets you use War Cries to open chests and gain a chance for more loot on corpses. Corpses must exist, so if you're exploding, shattering, or anything like that, then this is useless. Might of the Bear gives you a 20 slot backpack to tilt back extra gear. Then beyond this note are slots for charms. Charms are sold by the Primal Huntress for Primal Wisps, the blue ones. These charms have modifiers that contain minor versions of all the other ascendancies. And yes, you can stack the same modifier. This ascendancy also comes with increased quantity of Primal Wisps sound. So if you're sitting here like, why do I give a shit about any of these or why should I interact with these guys? First off, everything they sell is tradable. Secondly, the wisps are only tradable to the vendors and do not persist beyond the instance. 
Once you leave to go back to the zone or map, your remaining wisps disperse and dust monsters in the zone or map randomly. More than one wisp can affect a monster at a time, buffing them and the rewards they drop. The blue primal wisps give increased item rarity. The purple wild wisps give you increased item quantity. The yellow vivid wisps give more currency. Here's the map crafts. And now for the core changes. Trial of the Ancestors is out. Silver coins and tattoos are gone, but the omens and uniques are staying. Metamorph is also out. Taking its place is Ultimatum, also replacing its Atlas, Tree Nodes, Scarabs, and even the Stash tab. Catalysts are moving to the Ultimatum loot table. Ultimatum will pretty much be the same as it was in the Ultimatum League, with the exception of rare spawns being adjusted, loot being adjusted since you won't encounter it in every map, and Ultimatum monsters not dropping loot. Heist has undergone a rework. Grand Heist rewards are no longer locked to a specific tile set. Alt quality skill gems are gone. To compensate, they've added and reworked replica uniques and adjusted currency reward stacks. Divine font and chants in the lab are gone. Now the font is used to craft skill gems into a new type called transfigured gems. While alternate quality gems used to only differ in what the percentage quality granted, these transfigured gems will change the behavior of skills, sometimes in incredibly drastic ways. Most of the helmet enchants have been moved to the gem itself. Because of this quality on gems is more powerful than before, the recipe to change a level 20 gem into a level 1 with 20% no longer works on anything besides unawakened support gems. The font also has the ability to add XP and quality to gems, change gems into XP for you, change them into treasure keys, or change them into exceptional gems. You can put your main skill in there to see the options that it'll change into. If you don't like the results, you can take your gem back without being locked into changing it. The Transfigure craft is available at all levels of the lab, while the more advanced crafts are restricted and more likely at higher difficulties. The supporter packs for the League in the year will be released on League launch. Some nice general quality of life changes to mention is control clicking all vendors will now open the trade window. Stacks can be split while a trade window is open, and your character names can be changed and swapped through the website. You get two of these changes per week but can bank these up to a maximum of 20. And we'll see you in the next one.